I wanted to make this video an informative video because we haven't sat down and just had a proper chat like this for a while. Um, so I'm going to give you a little update of where I'm at, a little update of what I'm going to do, and then we're going to delve into the title of this video and it's going to be all about cardio. First things first, what am I doing? Moving forward, we're pushing for more condition for the British finals. Straight up, we want more conditioning. We're going to bring in a tighter package and then we're going to bring in a fuller package. So in doing that, we've now reintroduced cardio again. For those of you guys that don't remember, I pulled out my cardio two weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago. Um, and we still maintain condition, which was great, but we needed to come in fuller for the Arnolds. IFBB international competitions are... They're bigger dudes, they're bigger dudes. I had to come in bigger and I think that really played to my benefit when I as coming in seventh. I think if I'd come in a little bit tighter, a little bit flatter, um, I wouldn't have done so well. So we've reintroduced 30 minutes fasted every single morning. Doesn't make a difference if you do it fasted or not. It's a little hint for later on. And that is gonna be every single day. Um, and we're just gonna bring that baseline weight back down to our lowest, which was 83.8 and hopefully just dip a little bit under that. This morning I was 87.5. I expect that to drop probably half a kilo every single day, if not more, especially today being the rest day, zero carbs, and I did the cardio this morning. So that's where we're going, that's where we're headed. British finals, we know the goal is top three. Um, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Originally I was I was, I was sure, I was gonna, oh, not sure, but you know, like I, I backed myself, um, but now, Nah, two of the guys beat me at the Arnold, so that's kind of put me at third already. So we'll see how it goes. You guys know how it is. I'll keep it real with you. That's the way it is. Let's delve into the topic of cardio. First of all, we're going to break the myths. Um, people always think that cardio burns fat. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. What burns fat is a calorie deficit. So what people do think, and the common misconception is, I've just started doing cardio, now I'm starting to lose weight. Actually, what you've done is, is just increase your calorie expenditure which overall puts your, your energy balance in a deficit. So if you don't change anything but add cardio, really all you're doing is just putting yourself into a deficit, therefore you're gonna start losing weight. That's the myth busted. Uh, there's no other way to us about it. And then we'll talk about fasted versus non-fasted cardio. Doesn't make a difference. I don't need to talk about it forever. Doesn't make a difference, guys. If you burn 100 calories in the morning, it's the same as burning 100 calories in the evening. Okay, I understand the whole, okay, you've been in a faster state for a longer period of time. Really, that just means that you should probably consume more protein because um, you haven't had protein for a while, you need to keep that protein coming in to optimize protein synthesis. I do it fasted because it sets me up mentally for the day, um, it gets you a great blood flow to the brain. Um, and actually I'm going to put this, this picture on screen right now. This is after 20 minutes of walking versus 20 minutes of sitting. Your brain activity is a lot higher when you're walking, so I find that just setting yourself up with that with that output in the middle uh, at the beginning of the day is highly highly beneficial so now we'll talk about which cardio should you do should you do lists should you do hit low intensity steady state versus high intensity interval training now if we're talking just in general lifestyle preference personal preference is king why would you do something you don't want to do if you don't want to sit on a treadmill for 45 minutes why would you do it don't do it if you'd like to go in there get on the battle ropes get your 10 15 minutes hit hit in, hit workout in go do it there's no, there's no, there's no real difference. You know, see what, how much time you've got, see how your lifestyle uh, goes, and then just work around that. If we're going to talk about optimate optimization, guys, and you guys know how much I love optimization. There's always doing it right, and then there's optimizing what you're doing in terms of preserving muscle, in terms of bodybuilding. This is the way forward for me. Please comment down below if you disagree. But for me, low intensity, steady state, you know, you're causing less impact on your muscles, less impact on your joints. Um, I always try and choose an ergonomic, if that's the right word, or a, or a, I always try to choose a piece of equipment that works very well with my body. For me, it's the Stairmaster. There's low impact on the joints. Um, it's hard, which is good, uh, but we try and keep the damage to the muscles, to the tendons, to the joints limited because that's where we need to prioritize training. But often you can find if you just go for some sprints on a bike, your leg is going to be sore the next day. That's because you've actually created microfibril fibril tears and you've actually created some muscle damage. That's why if you look at cyclists like Chris Hoy or the Olympic sprinters, their quads are fucking massive. They're massive. It's because they're creating that high intensity power breaking down muscle fibers that is how essentially powerlifters work that kind of thing is what you want to stay away from just because we want to use that sort of energy in the training you can delve a little bit deeper into the optimization of cardio and actually on your rest days or on my rest days is where i situate the majority of my cardio um, and the reason is is because we are not focusing on training that day we have extra energy to burn and extra energy to use 
towards something else. So we can go and do our 100 minutes of cardio, which is what I was doing, and it was, it was tough and it was hard. Um, but I wasn't taking away from training and I was only doing 20 minutes on training days just just to, just to get that calorie burn in anyway But I wasn't sticking an hour of cardio on training days because it took so much energy so many calories Away from my training which I need to focus on retaining numbers hitting PBs um, And forcing my muscles to stay because if you get weaker in the gym that's, that's just a recipe for muscle loss, guys, and we do not want to lose muscle. That's the last thing that we want to do is lose muscle. So instead, we focus on pushing our cardio to our rest days where we can. Obviously, you need to keep the calorie burning if you're trying to lose weight anyway, and then in turn, focus on training. The question of food versus cardio, which should you take down, which should you take up? I'm very much an advocate of eating more and doing more. I find it creates it creates an anabolic body, so you're doing more, you're turning over quicker, you're processing nutrients faster, um, and you're using energy more efficiently. That's how I feel, that's anecdotally how I feel. I would do more, and I would eat more. I find it just helps with hunger, helps with sat satisfaction, and personally, just mentally, it helps having to actually eat a lot of food rather than just starve yourself. I did the starving route last year, and I just craved so, 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 so much. I would much rather do more. In fact, doing more takes my mind away from food, so I find that helps. And then in terms of when should you increase, when should you decrease, this, again, is so goal-dependent. You've got your set time period, maybe you're doing a 16-week cut, um, you know how much weight you need to lose, you know how much body fat you want to get to, you can work out all those numbers, you can. Say you're at 20%, you need to get to 10%, you've got 16 weeks to do it. You know that you've got to lose just under a percent a week in order to hit your goal. And if you're not hitting that percent every, or just under a percent every single week, you know that you need to make an increase or you need to make a decrease in food. There's so many variables to take in consideration. And then just to kind of stay, to move away from cutting and losing body fat, we can talk about gaining body fat. If you feel like your breath is getting, you're getting out of breath and your sets are being affected and your training is being affected because of your cardiovascular system, because you're getting out of breath, you're just getting tired quicker, that is when you would want to introduce some cardio. And now there's no good just doing a few steps and upping your expenditure. This is what pisses me off when I see people just doing some steps because, oh, I need better cardio. If you need better cardio, train for cardio. Get your heart rate high, 140 beats per minute if you're kind of 20 to 30. If you're pushing up above 30, 40, then you can go down to 120. But you've got to get your heart rate up high, guys. You've got to train your heart. You can't just sit there at 90 beats per minute and do some steps for expenditure. That's just burning calories. That's not training your cardiovascular system. So if it's what you want to train as your cardiovascular system, train it like a muscle, guys. Progress it. Make it harder over time. Uh, and that's it, guys. That's the secret to fucking getting shredded. Cardio. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll be back maybe tomorrow or the next day. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, guys. As always, drop a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Share it. Tell your mums and daughters and maybe husbands. See you later. Peace.